What's going on everybody, C4, welcome back to the channel and we are here flashing back to the 2007 season and we are here for episode 2 of our Madden Retro Career Revivals. Episode 1 was Jamarcus Russell, it went over very well. So if you know Jamarcus Russell, you very much know the centerpiece for today's video and that is Vince Young. We're going to travel back a little bit. 2006, college football, the greatest college football game called by some of all just of all time the greatest game of all time of all time the 2006 rose bowl reggie bush and the usc trojans vince young and the texas longhorns i remember that game that was like right when the young c4 was starting to get into football hardcore into college football that was when i was just like jesus i might like college football more than i like the nfl and that game was epic that game was crazy in the face of that game the most iconic moments from that game belong to this man right here, Vince Young. Vince Young went on, entered the draft 2006, was the third overall pick, the best quarterback in that class to the Tennessee Titans, and was decent in the NFL, but the hype was almost immeasurable on Vince Young. He was a prototype, 6'5", 230, came with almost 90 speed. He was ahead of his time. If Vince Young came out in today's NFL, he'd be consensus number one overall pick. Teams would be building around him. He'd be unstoppable. At that time, it was still... You know, we had Michael Vick, you had Don McNabb, Steve McNair to an extent. We, they weren't sure. So you had the greatest quarter, quarterback prospect from college to the NFL of all time. Went to the Tennessee Titans, was pretty solid, won the NFL Rookie of the Year. Made a couple Pro Bowls, was the cover of Madden 08. But fizzle. Things just didn't work out. There were some injuries, some mental stuff. And really, the lasting th thought I think a lot of people have right now of Vince Young was when he was on the Philadelphia Eagles as a backup quarterback and labeled them as a dream team. I want to erase that memory, personally as an Eagle fan, but also for the career of a guy that is one of the greatest what-ifs in NFL history. And that is what we're going to do here today. We're starting the 07 season. I don't know how many years we're going to go, but we are going to replay the career of Vince Young one of the greatest that never was, unfortunately, and see if we can make him one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. We No spoilers if you want to go see the Jamarcus Russell video, but we made Jamarcus Russell pretty much Tom Brady. So the bar has been set incredibly high. Looking at very quickly at our team, because this is a Vince Young rebuild, but it is important, and we will be focusing throughout these years just on the team building to, to an extent. Uh, we have Lendell White. Don't really remember a lot of these guys on this team. O-line's pretty good. David Stewart, Kevin Mawai, Michael Roos. But we need a lot of help here. Wide receiver and tight end. Maybe we'll be able to draft CJ2K. That'd be pretty cool. Defensively, Vandenbosch was a stud. This is before Albert Hainsworth was trash and was one of the most dominant players in the NFL. I'm telling you, if you don't remember Albert Hainsworth at his peak, he was kind of like Aaron Donald at the time. You got Keith Bullock. We got a young Stephen Tulloch. Uh, Pac-Man Jones, superstar there with his return ability. Kirtland Finnegan. So, like, there's some nice players on this team. But ultimately, there is a little bit of rebuild that needs to go around Vince Young. But our job over the next X amount of years, I don't know how many we're going to go. I don't know if we'll be able to go to current day. Vince Young's 39 right now. So I don't know. X amount of years that we're going to do in this rebuild. But ultimately, before we're said and done, I want to make Vince Young regarded as one of the greatest of all time. That is our goal. We're starting here in 2007. Let's get into it. So year one is in the books. Our 2007 season, the Titans eight and nine. So we had a little bit of a learning curve. Year one for Vince Young. We had the number one rushing offense, number 30. I mean, look again, when you have a team with a heavy scrambling quarterback, tends to skew that way. 37 yards, 27 touchdowns for Vince Young, 10 picks, 58% completion percent. Just bump that up a little bit. Uh, good year for Lindell White, seven rushing touchdowns for Vince Young. So he probably did enough to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. 2,000-yard receivers there. Actually, pretty decent year out of Drew Bennett. Uh, defensively, some, you know, holy shit. Keith Bullock, 17 sacks. It was kind of more of a well-rounded linebacker. I, I just think it's our limited pass rush. Uh, awarded him that opportunity. But more so focusing on the uh, man of the hour, Vince Young. Uh, let's take a look and just take a gander and see, did he win the Rookie of the Year? I assume that he at least was pretty close. Did not make the MVP race. Usually we have those like cheesy rushing quarterback numbers that help us out. He is number 10 for Offensive Player of the Year. And he is Offensive Rookie of the Year. Lendell White, runner up there. So while the team success not totally there, pretty good rookie season. Good starting point here for Vince Young. Quick look at our first draft. Following along the lines of the actual Titans, I made the same pick they made in the first round. Bring in Michael Griffin from Texas, 76 with a hidden dev. He's going to be a day one starter for us at Strong Safety. Rest of the draft wasn't the best. We did get a hidden dev 
Uh, at the third pick, the fourth round, Scott Chandler at tight end, but still not really overly impressive. Year two for Vince Young and the Titans. We go 12-5. and five. We win the AFC South. We go in the playoffs. We go on a little bit of a run. And I actually think much like the Jamarcus Russell Raiders rebuild, that the Patriots were a pain in our ass for like a couple of those early years. So as you can see here, we beat the Jags. We handled the Dolphins, but the Patriots were just on a different level. Tom Brady... Bill Belichick. I mean, that's a tough assignment, especially at this point. Man, we're only in the second year for Vince Young. Looking at the stats here, 30. I mean, again, it's we're in a scheme here. We're using just base Titans. That's got to be, you know, it's, that's that's temper expectations. I don't I don't think unless he like you know hits 95 X factor or something like that. Vince Young's going to be going for like 40 bombs. It's just the the nature of our offense right now. I mean, we could tweak it at a later date. I don't want to do that just yet. And that's not a bad year at all. 27 touchdowns, four picks, and being able to chip in five rushing touchdowns. Lendell White went off, 2,000 yard receivers. Again, we still don't have that X factor wide receiver. Maybe we look that direction for the draft to get, like, you know, that real wide receiver one. But uh, not a bad year, too, for the Tennessee Titans. And for our draft, had a tough call here in the first round. We kind of went Jordy Nelson at wide receiver or Calais Campbell. Kind of went with my gut here because of the wide receiver in the second round. I thought would be a little bit better. Uh, wasn't so much the case. Uh, Clayton Campbell, 74, hidden a dev. I mean, he's going to be an absolute beast there on the D-line. Um, but then we got Harry Douglas, who eventually ended up in Tennessee from the Atlanta Falcons. He's only 64 normal. Here's your Michael Finley here. Texas, tight end. Was Vince Young's tight end in college. And uh, he's garbage. He was, like, really good. Uh, so, yeah, I got Eagles legend Kerry Williams there as well. Ultimately, um, you know, we're still looking for a wide receiver. So year three, as we go into our 2009 season, Vince Young is up to a 92 superstar. Still have yet to get that dev trade increase up to a superstar. I'm sure he would immensely benefit from having escape artists, which also kind of fits into his skill set. Uh, as you look at our squad, though, we definitely still need to help him at the, the skill position spots. I mean, Bennett, Givens, they're solid, but we don't have that playmaker. That's why our team is still so heavily focused on the run. Defensively, it is coming together defensively. We got Calais Campbell starting their defensive end. Michael Griffin it was a superstar, but, you know, I'd like to get a little bit more on the off. Maybe, you know, in hindsight, I should have went Jordy Nelson over Calais Campbell. And in year three, I shit you not, we go 13-4. and four. Our second straight divisional title, we had the first round by, we we're the one seed, and we are in the Super Bowl against the 10 and 7. This is like you're rolling into the beginning of the Legion of Boom era, kind of, for Seattle. They're, they're a good team. Battle of two, eight, 87 overalls. They got Sean Alexander. Look at the playoff bracket. I was a little bit worried with the first round by, they're going to be one and done, but we beat the Raiders. We went up against a very, like, this is prime LT Chargers. We beat them, and you look at the other side, I mean, they handled their business. And uh, because it's so early in this rebuild, we're just going to sim it. Straight up sim it. If we win it, we win it. If not, I don't want to crash the rebuild by hopping in and trying to play the moment. Like I don't think it really matters. I always usually tend that when you play, when you just sim it from the main screen, you have a better chance at winning the Super Bowl, which is exactly what we do. Looking at the recap just to see what happens. Titans are your, <laughs> their first Super Bowl, and Albert Hainsworth. A guy, a player, especially like, you know, in the scope of Vince Young, Tennessee Titans. That, you know, what ifs? If that's what we're asking here, Alvin Haynes is right there in the lore of Tennessee Titans. Because, again, man, I, I think he's one of those guys, like, it's it sucks that he's so forgotten. Because at, on his day, Albert Haynesworth was literally like one of the most, like, one of the most unstoppable players I, I, think, I've, I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, I want to get a look here of this Super Bowl. So in the conference, we beat, yeah, we handled them pretty easy. And uh, you know what? Maybe build the trenches. Maybe how good our defense is. That's That was the right call, going Calais Campbell in the draft. Even though we are focusing on Vince Young, we want to put Vince Young in the best chance to succeed. You know, we got to win some Super Bowls. And winning a Super Bowl in year three, taking that, you know, championship pedigree that he established at Texas and being able to play. Yeah, he might not be MVP yet. Might not be an MVP caliber quarterback. Might not be throwing for 40 touchdowns. But this young man led this team to be the best team in their conference and to win a Super Bowl in year three. And hopefully this is the beginning of a very successful career. You know what I'm thinking, top man? I think we might just do 15 years. You can all. I, I just hate when you do these things like, we'll go to retires because then you have like the last two, three years. Will he, won't he? That gets a little bit late. So my plan right now is 15 years with Vince Young. And in year three... 
He goes 13 and four, gets himself a Super Bowl, three touchdowns, one interception. Look at the rest of the fellas here. Huge day from Melendell White. Drew Bennett had a nice game. Albert Ainsworth, four TFLs, two sacks. It was unstoppable. That is your Super Bowl MVP. The Titans have won a Super Bowl. Let's keep stacking them, man. The pace car was set with Jamarcus Russell in that Raiders rebuild. We pretty much made Jamarcus Tom Brady 2.0. Four five Super Bowls, a uh, couple MVPs. We got to see if we can top that here with Vince Young. But through three years, an outstanding start. So for our driver cup, took a little bit of liberties, and then I just kind of justify it by, by auto picking the draft. So the first round, I want Jared Cook at tight end. Uh, he was probably the best pure receiver that we could add to the room. Uh, 69, hit and dev, 90 speed. I mean, again, I, I don't want to think about the playbook, too, but they're currently rocking the Titans playbook, so I figured maybe a good tight end, game changer tight end, might be beneficial. Julian Edwin was literally the next best wide receiver. He's a UDFA, obviously. Um, so, And the rating's not anything too cheesy. The depth rate could be. So I was just like, you know what, I'm going to overdraft Julian Edelman and literally, just for the rest of this draft, fill out depth with guys that have portraits in the game. Like, I've never heard of these guys. And uh, we kind of finished it out here. Uh, outside of the punter, I got more stead at punter. You know, special teams' lives matter too. So here's how our team looks as we go to defend our Super Bowl title. Hopefully the fact that we won the Super Bowl title makes you forget the fact that we were unable to be able to draft CJ2K and kind of relive that perfect Titan scenario of like, what if they had the rushing attack? With a peak decent, above decent. I was honest. Vince Young's spell fires back have been very good. Uh, but obviously picking at 32. And I wasn't really going to sabotage to like try to get Chris Johnson. So let's just kind of you know smooth that over with Edelman and Jared Cook on the offensive side of the ball. As we look to defend our Super Bowl title. Here in year four. So at the end of year four, we go back to the Super Bowl. 10-7. and seven, Not a great record, but we win the AFC South. Our third straight and total AFC South title. And an absolute just warpath. This is a team that might not be sexy. We might not, you know, absolutely smoke, crush, dominate every single opponent. But the way that we're built, the way that we can run the football, the way that we can play defense, it is a tried, tested, and true winning formula here. I mean, we put up points there against the Chargers. Chargers are a MF in team that you want you don't want to see in the playoffs. Again, Phillip Rivers. Yeah, I think they got Vince Jackson, like eight running backs that are dominant. But here we are, Vince Young going up against the future super team, Philadelphia Eagles. Can we make it two straight Super Bowls back to back? Can the dynasty begin or do we have a slight step back? The, ah, there we go, man. Slight step back. 35-17, Philly knock us off in the 2010 Super Bowl. Donovan McNabb finally writes all the wrongs and gets himself... A Super Bowl title, but very close. We'll be back. We'll be back. And as far as the thrower, really good year for Vince Young. 4,000 yards passing, 33 touchdowns, to 12 interceptions. So he was top 10 in passing touchdowns. So that's the evolution of the game that we want to see. Uh, and there you go. He's been getting five, six, seven rushing touchdowns. He just put them on. He tacked them on the throwing aspect, which I'm fine with by all means. Uh, not a bad year. Julian Edelman's 1,000 yards for the second round. Well, Rewriting history, second round wide receiver, quarterback convert at a Kent State. So, you know, again, quick turnaround. I think we'll be back in the Super Bowl again in year five. I had no interest in any free agents till this point. I'm not skipping over. I'm not signing guys. I'm not telling you. But you know what? If we're committing to this run first offense, let's invest in the fullback spot. Get John Kuhn on board. Our 2010 draft recap. We got some wide receiver help here. Got Demarius Thomas, not a you know outrageous rating, but he does have a dev trait, and he's going to be able to stretch the field. Uh, outside of that, you know, just average draft. Got some names that I, I kind of remember, but we did get a little juicy pick here in the seventh round to compare with you know Lendale White, ultimate power back. We got another power back, Legarrett Blunt. Got the dev trait, fifty nine. Long way to go, but definitely fits the identity of this offense. But happy to get Demarius Thomas at pick thirty one in the first round. For year five, we go 10 and 7, second place in the AFC South, and we we go on an honest to God, damn good playoff run. Not super high expectations, even though we do kick ass in the playoffs. We handle business, man. We beat the Texans 35-27. We beat the Bengals 28-17 in the AFC Championship game. Just losing out to the Kansas City Chiefs, who uh, prevent the Super Bowl rematch as the Eagles make back-to-back -back Super Bowls. A little bit of a dynasty potentially going on. The other side of the bracket there in the AFC, but 
I mean, again, very competitive season. Can't be too upset with that, especially because, you know, we're kind of, you know, our offense is a little bit of work in progress now. We got Demaryius Thomas. We're trying to develop as a team that can run and throw. And yeah, a little bit of a step back for Vince Young here this year. 37 yards, 22 touchdowns to 12 picks. Uh, did have three uh, rushing touchdowns. Again, Demarius, Julian Edmond, like to see more out of them on the offense. Yeah, you know, we'll show a little love to the defensive side of the ball here. 13 sacks. Albert Hayes with four picks. Michael Griffin. But uh, back to the drawing board for year six. At least we got a big signing in free agency. We got Marshall Yanda on a six-year deal. We're going to be able to kick him from right tackle. We don't really need him. And he's going to be our new starting left guard for the foreseeable future. Big get for the O-line here. Our 2011 draft was very much just BPA. And we went Mike Pouncey at center, 73 with a hidden dev. You know, we had a solid offensive line. Why not make it elite, I suppose? I get to know her who also, I think, actually was drafted by the Titans as well. Rest of the draft was kind of mid, but we got, hey, we got a hidden dev trail prior to be a, you know, backup in case maybe Vince Young doesn't want to take in a contract extension this upcoming season. I don't know. The whole Terrell Pryor thing, don't gotta worry about it. We got Vince Young on a six-year contract extension worth $278 million for our 99 overall superstar quarterback. For year six, we went into the AFC South, 12-5, back on top. And you know what? You know, you might, you're not gonna win the Super Bowl every year. At least we're not one and done. Nothing pisses me off more. Nothing kills franchise mode immersion. When you have a juggernaut team like we do, I mean, our team's not S2 jugging up, but we're 90 overall. There's not many teams that are going to be better than us. You're one and done every other year. We've had rebuilds like that. We've gone on a run. Every year we've made the playoffs, we've gone on a little bit of a run. We beat the Jets, we beat the Chargers, and it's those damn Patriots. Brady and Belichick, the one seed. You know, you can kind of concede that. Anytime you lose to the Patriots, as long as it's peak Brady Belichick, um, you know, it's more of like it is what it is. Kind of can be your only complaint. Take a look at our squad. Lendell White, top three for running backs. So that's pretty dope. Vince Young, I mean, you know, we're not going to be as prolific as we were with Jamarcus Russell in the Raiders without crushing the immersion of this video. There is a little bit of playbooks that go into it. But, uh, you know, we're, we got our own lane here with Vince Young. That's still not a bad year. 26 touchdowns, 6 picks. Uh, we ran the ball incredibly well. 30 rushing touchdowns from our two running backs. 3 there from Vince Young. 1,000 yards for our two young a dynamic superstar talent wide receivers and Edelman and Demarius Thomas defensively. Tulloch was a machine, 18 half sacks, Albert Hainsworth, five picks, Cortland Finnegan, just very happy with all of those type numbers, yearly awards, Sanchez is the MVP, which is kind of gross, nothing for our Titans, it's not Cortland Finnegan, DB of the year, which is pretty cool, every other year though, we haven't had one award winner, again, I, you know, if we have something, I'll show it, so I mean, our team's been very good, we have four divisional titles in five years, a Super Bowl victory, a Super Bowl loss, but in terms of individual success, it's just been, you know, no stars. Even though we have stars, no guys that are getting those crazy offensive, defensive player of the year, MVPs, nothing like that. We've just been a really good team on both sides of the football. So we'll dust ourselves off and come back next season. Draft, um, I need a safety. Safety is my top need, and there, you dangle that fruit in front of me. Gonna have to try to grab Harrison Smith. Still available, pick 29. So, uh, yeah, but I, and I, I just like, you know what, trade off, I, I, you know, we'll, we'll just auto sim the rest of the draft, no one too crazy, no other dev traits, but uh, very excited to have Harrison Smith back there in the secondary. Year 7, everything kind of came full circle, we're back to 8-9, which was our record year 1, even though our team is a 90 overall, and Vince Young is the face of our 92 overall offense, you definitely can just tell there's, 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 a, gla there's a ceiling. To this playbook as far as Vince Young is a thrower. Talent wise, there's absolutely no reason why my 99 overall quarterback should be performing the way. I, I think I'm a, I don't want this series, I don't want any of these retro series, these things that we commit long term 10 years to, 15 years, to turn into like it's just playbooks, doesn't matter what players we have. But, you know, you know, you could, you could switch things up a little bit. I feel like. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens next year because this is our only down year so far. We've had really five-year period, six-year period that we've been very good. But if next year sucks, I, we might change it up here just a little bit. Uh, I think when all when all said and done, defensively, you know, we got a lot of pressure. 
Wasn't the defense's reason why we were losing, but uh, you don't want to regress like that, man. Eight and nine, that's gross. For our draft recap, we needed a corner. We needed a wide receiver. So I got Desmond Trufant in the first round, 77 hidden dev. Uh, he's going to be the successor. He's going to be right there with Cortland Finnegan. And then the second round, we need a wide receiver. I think, you know, he's you know cheesy pick, I guess. But he's the wide receiver one for the Tennessee Titans in real life ahead of this 2022 season. So what if Bobby Trees just started his career with Tennessee? He's going to be our wide receiver three behind Demarius Thomas and Jerry McAvoy. Kevon Webster, 71. Not too bad of a rating there. The rest of the draft class, kind of average. In year eight, we go 12 and five. I'm glad we didn't change the offense up. We go 12 and five, we win the AFC South, but unfortunately, we go on a playoff run. We crash and burn in the championship game. I think this is the third time we've lost in the championship game. So, like, yeah, no. What are we, the Eagles? The Andy Reid and Donovan McNabb and all those guys? Like, I, I would take three Super Bowl losses instead of three pre Super Bowl losses, if you know what I'm saying there. But. At least we bounce back. We're thinking we might have to reinvent the wheel here with this team. But look, you got Lendell White, second leading rusher there. Uh, Vince Young, you know, we, we threatened to change the playbook. He's like, I can, I can do better, boss. Throws up 4K, 34 touchdowns, 7 picks. Lendell White, man, has been crushing. Look at that Vince Young. Out of the blue, man, I just... Why is it so weird? Like, why does some year Vince Young have no touchdowns? And then other years he has 9 freaking rushing touchdowns. He might get MVP. Honestly, all things said and done. Uh, Edelman was solid, 14 touchdowns, Bobby Trees, a little bit of a disappointing season from Demarius Thomas, 10 sacks, Calais Campbell, 4 picks, Stephen Tulloch. I will say, uh, behind the scenes, I've just been silent, you guys don't really, not that I don't really care, I don't want these videos to be 90 fucking minutes, so I've been just signing our, you know, free handling in, in-house free agency and, and extensions, stuff like that, our salary like gap's getting pretty thin, so we might have a little bit of a down period coming up, but there, that's probably the closest we've come to MVP for Vince Young, third place, here in the 2014 season, as Andrew Luck and the Colts win it. Uh, Bobby Trees is Offensive Rookie of the Year. And it is what it is, man. So close, but at least we had that nice little bounce back from the down year last year in 2013. And hopefully this is, you know, this continues. It was a rough draft. I needed a lot of things. I needed two new outside linebackers and a pass rusher because Kyle Vandenbosch retired. He's been a long mainstay. We were able to get a nice outside linebacker, Kyle Van Noy, versatile player, hidden dev. That was it. I got Morgan Moses. We got Avery Williamson, who I'm, I think, I don't know if he started his career as Tennessee, but he was a good player for a couple of years for the Tennessee Titans. He's just stuck there on a normal dev. But this was a draft class kind of needed because our salary cap's getting very, very, very thin, very light. Uh, to hit on a couple players, and it just, uh, you know, one of three is better than 0 for 3 in terms of position and needs. So for year 9, yeah, I could have waited to year 10, nice round number. I want to show you what the team is right now. We got 99 Vince Young, Lendo White's up to an X Factor. We got Edelman, Demarius Thomas, and Bobby Trees at wide out. Roos is still going for the full rebuild. Pouncey, Yonda, Stewart, Cook. It's good offense. Defensively, this is where we had a little bit of turnover, unfortunately. We got Tulloch. Van Noy, so like, as you can see, like, you know, we're lucky we got Van Noy here, but uh, weren't able to really replace everything we needed to replace in one offseason. You know, that's fine. Gives us something to build towards next year. We'll go to next year's draft, the 2015 draft, needing a defensive end and outside linebacker. Given our salary cap, we're not going to be aggressive in free agency, probably for the remainder of the rebuild. That's how these retro things work. Free agency's garbage 90% of the time anyways. Uh, we got Harrison Smith, X-Factor as well. Hainsworth is regressing. Starks is regressing. Like, we're going to need to get really younger at everywhere not Calais Campbell on the defensive side of the D-line that makes no sense but you know what I'm saying it's 1 in 30 in the morning it's my first video back in eight days we're just working our way through it but the secondary is outstanding Pac-Man Jones 96 Trufant Finnegan Griffin and Smith absolutely expect this to be a playoff caliber team and maybe we can finally I don't know if say finally we've won the Super Bowl but it feels like we've been stuck on that hump of the AFC championship game Let's get into a Super Bowl, at least, here in year nine. Year nine goes with a nine and eight record. Not the best, but at least we made the playoffs, uh, unfortunately. I mean, still not one and done. We've yet to go one and done. Knock on wood in this rebuild. We were able to handle the Jets here, 42-35. Unfortunately, we went up to the one seed. Browns are pretty good this season, able to knock us off. So that is how we kind of dip out here year nine. At least we go in playoffs. Still, you know, successful. Lendell White, second rusher again. Well, and then, you know, just fucking no consistency with our quarterback. It's not a brutal year. It's not a good year at all for 99, for the level that he is. He had nine touchdowns, whatever. Three. 
Like, what's going on? We just closing our eyes, spinning a spin the wheel. And that kind of tells you what your uh, an outrageous Finnegan just eight TFLs from the slot. Love seeing that. 15 has sacks, Calais Campbell, six picks for the Pac Man. I'm yeah, just frustrated the inconsistency here with Vince Young. At least, you know, we've only done two of these. This is number two. So, number one, we only have one baseline to go off of. But at least uh, Jamarcus Russell was consistently getting 35, 40 tutties. So, for this draft, outside linebacker, need one. Need pass rush. Albert Hainsworth, retired. Need a D tackle. And this is what we got. We got Eric Kendrick in the first round. It's a great pick. Rating's not the best, but you know the dev trade will probably swing things around here. Trey Flowers in the second round. Rating is god-awful. Need that to probably be better than Star. If that's a Star, that's probably still a nothing pick. A long way to go. Uh, and then just, uh, luckily, the computer, I simmed this one out, got us Layal Collins in the sixth round. He's going to be a swing tackle. He's purely, you know, buried on the depth chart. But, again, kind of rolling on good dev trades for some of these players because their base ratings aren't the best. But happy to get Eric Kendricks and a couple guys with the hidden devs. U10! Uh, I found some bad news. A little bit. It's not, it's not crushing. It's just a little bit annoying. Uh, I'll show you that in just one second. We went 10 and 7. Second in the division. No divisional title. Would have been nice. But at least, you know, in the playoffs. Weren't one and done. Keep that streak alive. Beat the Raiders. 28-24 in the opening round. And then we just, again, this is, when we make the playoffs, if you notice when we don't go far, it's like we lose to the one seed. And then, you know, you're not, you can't bitch complain about that. Uh, statistically speaking, though, good year. Good year. I'll take this out of Vince Young. 35 touchdowns, fourth in the league. Uh, the yards kind of suck, which put them like, you know, we're not going to be getting that X factor off of that. But I'll absolutely take that type of stat line there. Lendell White keeps crushing it. 2,000-yard receivers. Bobby Trees, great season there. Defensively, Tulloch was a tackle machine. We got 18 half sacks. Calais Campbell, yes, sir. Now, the bad news is um, we're not going to be able... I mean, I could probably do the math for you guys. But as you can see, Vince Young's stats are ridiculous. These are modified rosters. That's how everything works. So when I was like, I was like, well, you know what happened here? Like Vince Young, why is, why is you know, he doesn't have 470? We haven't done that much yet. And then when you look at the stats, you can clearly tell that Vince Young was built off of Kirk Cousins. Because before the 20th, that's where we started. Uh, Minnesota, Washington. So that's Kirk Cousins. So it's not like we can't look at like the big picture easily. Uh, probably at the end, I will like just add up the touchdowns. I don't want to do a whole lot of math, but like, you know, total touchdowns is pretty cool uh, for Vince Young. But um, that's just uh, that's what happens. That's one of the downsides every now and again with these rosters. But Vince Young, I'm, I'm happy that in year ten, his tenth season, he's going top five for passing uh, passing touchdowns. That is awesome. Let's see if we can get some consistency. Let's see in his older years if we can find that level of consistency. As we go on now to year 11. Motherfuckers. So for the draft, I kind of wanted to do a Derrick Henry, Kevin Byard. Couldn't get it. Um, so I made Kenny Clark. We also needed a D-tackle. Still trying to find Albert Haynes with replacement. So we got Kenny Clark here at pick 2673 with a hidden dev. Byard, that's more so Michael Griffin's just getting up there in age. It's good to have a third safety uh, and then eventually a successor. So very happy to land, land him. I just simmed it out. We got hooked up here. We got Devondre Campbell in the fourth round. Obviously, these draft classes are made before his breakout year with the with the um, the Packers. But still, a very strong draft class. We needed that. Year 11, 12, and 5. We get the AFC South title, which is our sixth title. Six and 11 years is pretty damn good. Oh, yeah, just uh, rematch. Last time we made the Super Bowl, we lost to the Eagles back in 2010. Now here in 2017, get a chance to avenge that loss. Uh, we'll quickly look at our stats here. So win or lose, we can wrap this season up and get into year 12. Again, hot and cold, bipolar performance of Vince Young. 28 touchdowns there, not a lot of... You know, it's not prolific. That's not what we do. We run the football well. Try to protect the football as best we can and let our defense win these games. We are in our third Super Bowl Looking for our second victory a revenge game against the 12-5 Eagles. Come on, baby. Let's get that second Super Bowl. Yes! 27-21. The Titans do it. I mean, you know, Kyle Van Noy MVP. Got that in real life, that Patriot pedigree, the Patriot way. But Vince Young might not have the, the individual success that we hit in the first career revival with Jamarcus Russell. But the team success, two Super Bowls, that is fucking good enough. If you ask me, uh, let's get a look here. I do want to. I do want to see. 
that just the results here. Let me get the the box score. Who did what? 27-21. Finally, man. It feels like it's been forever. We beat RG3. I mean, eh? Eh? You know? Can't be like, oh, yeah, Vince Young. I mean, he did the rushing touchdown. Uh, but I'm going to assume we had just had some pretty gaudy numbers on the defensive side. Van Noy, your MVP, had nine tackles and an interception. Two and a half sacks. Calais Campbell, sack for Trey Flowers. Half sack for Randy Starks. Kind of, you know, just, you know, middle of the mall Super Bowl. But we will take that for our second Super Bowl victory of this rebuild. Let's go. For our 2017 draft, went in the first round. One with the big boy here. John Allen was BPA. Surprised he was still there. 73 with a hidden dev. Gives us a little versatility. Can move D tackle, keep him D end. We'll see. Get creative on the D line. Like I just sipped it out after that. I felt like that was a home run. Computer hooked up to Shaquille Griffin in the third round. I don't even need a corner, but I will take a 72 hidden dev corner every day of the week. Here's a look what our team is at at year 12 as we look to defend our Super Bowl. We have Vince Young. Regression has hit for some of our veterans, but he's still. 92 for old VY, 34. I'm optimistic, man. We got four years left of this rebuild to do the 15 years. I, I think we can make it. You know, I don't think we'll be cut short. Um, we still got Lendo White doing the damn thing. Demarius Thomas, Edelman, or Bobby Trees. Leo Collins at left tackle. As you can see, a little bit of shuffling here uh, on the offensive line. We get Bodine there. That's actually still a pretty strong offensive line, all things considered. And Jared Cook at tight end. Defensively is where we just got a lot of surplus. We got Clays Campbell, Starks, but he's probably going to retire this offseason. So we can either kick Jared Allen into D tackle, maybe Clays Campbell into D tackle, and we'll have Jared Allen, Trey Flowers at DN. We got options. Uh, Pac Man Jones, 92 X Factor. We got True Font, Shaquille Griffin, Harrison Smith, Michael Griffin still doing the damn thing. And then with Kevin Byard, their superstar, he's pretty much our slot. So that's, you know, there's still value there. Kendrick Tulloch and Van Noy at linebacker. I mean, this team is, is very good. Absolutely at minimum a playoff team to try to defend this Super Bowl title. Well, we got three years left in the rebuild. I was able to get Vince Young on a three-year contract extension worth $101 million. Don't retire. Don't skip out on me, dude. Three years. Let's go. And to defend our Super Bowl title, we go 8-9, and we don't even sniff the fucking playoffs. Uh, well, you know, Vince Young had a big year. If, if that's how we're measuring our success this year. 35 touchdowns with a big man. Uh, big, nice year out of Julian Edelman as well. Going over in 1,000 yards. Defensively, eight sacks. Glaze. I mean, the defense actually kind of shit the bet here. But uh, Vince Young was good. Silver lining. Got to get a little desperate here. So we dipped our toe into free agency. Got ourselves a left tackle in Trent Brown, who is, I believe, an 80 overall. Got that superstar dev. For the 2018 draft, really in like a BPA. Lendale White's not getting any younger, so I went with the top power back on the board at 15. And it was, you know, top power back board on 15. Dick Chubb, baby. 76 hidden dev. Gives us insurance. It's probably still going to be Lendale White to close out this rebuild. But, you know, if things get a little bit dicey, final year, we got Nick Chubb ready to go. And he, at worst, he's going to be a very nice RB2. Uh, kind of simmed out after that. We got Michael Gallup here in the third round. Computer hooked us up with that. 68 with the hidden dev. Not, I'll take that, but it's this is the Nick Chubb class. I'm not sure if the wheels are falling off on this rebuild. Very possible. I mean, we're not dog shit, but 7 and 10. Last place in the AFC South. Like, we're at a point where it's like, Jamar, you know, Jamarcus Russell and the Raiders are kind of laughing at us here. And Vince Young's probably just going to surprisingly retire in an offseason with no control. He's still playing at a decent level. 33 touchdowns, 8 picks for Vince. I don't even care what everyone else did. That's what a waste of a year here in our Madden 19 season. Our 2019 draft recap. I needed corner and guard, and I got corner and guard. Pick 11, we got Sean Murphy bumping 73, hidden dev. Uh, probably going to be corner 3. I got Eric McCoy, needed interior offensive line. I'll be able to kick him to guard with that hidden dev. Might be able to... You know, earn that starting gig over the final two years of this rebuild. Other than that, I mean, not really a brutal draft class, all things considered. Just a little worried these guys won't have time to develop to really make their impact. Year 14, bottom dwell. I mean, at this point, I just want I just want Vince Young to do one more year so we can go 15 years. We got our Super Bowls. Let's get the stats. Let's pad those stats here to close this one. 4,100 yards, 30 touchdowns for Vince Young. Uh, a little bit of a change in the guard there, Nick Chubb. I mean, either way, those are pretty disappointing numbers. 3,000-yard receivers is kind of cool. 
Defensively, I mean, we just got no no real studs outside of Clay's Campbell's been crushing it since we drafted him. Uh, right now, the only win for this rebuild is uh, Vince Young doesn't retire so that I can do 15 years and I can calculate all his stats. That's the win right now. All right, we had a lot of retirements, but not Vince Young. Yonda, Edelman, Lendale White, and Tulloch are gone. Man, Lendale White was a beast. Shout out to him. It's the final year of the rebuild. Let's swing for the fences. Bring in Vaughn Miller. We're going to convert him to a defensive end. Let's see if we can get a freak of nature of a pass rush between him and Calais Campbell for the 15th and final year. We needed Julian Edelman's replacement, and boy, oh boy, it was a good year to have a top 10 draft pick to need to replace that. We got Justin Jefferson, who, I mean, it's not my draft class. They've given us an 84 hidden dev. I ain't going to complain about that for our final year of the rebuild. Not once. I'm not saying a fucking thing. Let's go. And we're at the end. 15th and final year. O-line. Trent Brown, Vasquez, Pouncey, 97. McCoy, Collins, and Cook. We got Demarius Thomas, Robert Woods, the rookie Justin Jefferson, and Nick Chubb as our skill position players. Defensively, Von Miller. Kind of a mercenary. John Allen, Kenny Clark, Calais Campbell, Van Noy, Kendrick, and Tranquil. Griffin and Smith, Trufant, Harris Jr., who we signed last second in free agency. Uh, we got a bunch of star dev corners, even though I'm pretty sure Bayard still will be our slot. And, of course, the man of the hour. Year 15 for VY. 37-year-old Vince Young. Two Super Bowls. No MVPs. Can we get an MVP this year? Out of nowhere. 37 years old. I'm not. I'm going to. I could cheese it. Try to give him, like, the Chiefs playbook. Nah. He's going to get it. If he's, if he's going to get it, he's going to get it with the Titans. Everything we've done so far, this environment, it's going to stay the same. But can we get our MVP year 15? Can we get our third Super Bowl year 15? Let's find out. Fuck. Oh, my God. The the Cinderella story was almost on. We went 11-6. and six. We made the play. I didn't have any expectation. I was just like, you know what? First hurdle. Can We, we haven't gone one and done in the playoffs yet this whole rebuild. And we did that. We beat the Chiefs. Tough assignment. Second round. We beat the Bengals. I was like, holy shit. Are we going to go on a sewer run? Year 15. Final year. Does Madden know that this is the final year? And unfortunately, we tried our best, man. A little bit of a tease. A little bit of a tease. Vince Young did his best. Just couldn't find a way to beat Man Manziel and the Miami Dolphins, man. But it's awesome. I'm going to do some math here. Just one second. I'm going to do some math. We're going to get, get at least, I'll just give you the touch. I, it's, it's two in the morning. I'm not doing yards. That's too many numbers. But I'm going to give you guys total rushing touchdowns, total passing touchdowns to picks, and we'll see how at the end of 15 years, how does Vince Young stack up? Is he, uh, is he you know, he got two Super Bowls. No MVPs. Is he a Hall of Famer? A couple other quarterbacks got two Super Bowls. <coughs> Eli Manning. A lot of people don't think he's a Hall of Famer. So is Vince Young and Eli Manning? Or is Vince Young a bona fide Hall of Famer? Let's find out. Yeah, I think he's a Hall of Famer. Just think he I think he's a Hall of Famer. Two Super Bowl wins. I'm not I, I told you, not doing the yards. I'll, I, if you want to, if someone wants to look through all these ones going from 2021, pause the video, do all the yards. So be it. A lot of yards. Not not crazy yards. Average probably um. He's probably around 4,000 yards for 15 years. Touchdowns, passing, 455 passing touchdowns to 134 interceptions. And for as broken as scrambling quarterbacks is, I'm not doing the yards, but he had 43 rushing touchdowns. So Vince Young, no MVPs. He finishes his 15-year career rebuild with 498 total touchdowns. It would have been cool to get two more in there. But 498, two MV, uh, two Super Bowls. I don't even think he, he didn't get MVP in any of those Super Bowls. He was just a winner, like he was in college. Put up big numbers, like he did in college. And you know he's, you know, that's a Hall of Famer. And I think that's all you can do, man. In a rebuild like this, MVPs would be nice because you're isolating, you're focusing on one player. But those are those are like you know he should have got MVP at least one of those years. He goes down in the Hall of Fame. Two Super Bowls. That's a perfect way to end this one. That's a perfect way to end our second Madden retro career rebuild. So with that being said, fellas, let me know in the comment section below what player career you would love to see me do before we get into the Madden 23 cycle. There's one guy throughout all the years. I've seen some RG3s. Oh, you know, RG3 would be cool. 
I don't know the same itch that I, did, I wanted to do with Vince Young. Maybe Vince Young's a little bit more forgotten. RG3 still in the media. He's there all the way. But if there's one player you want to see, I probably got, you know, two of these, two, three more of these in me. If there's a great player that you guys want to see. So keep on letting me know in the comment section below. As always, your first time stopping by, though, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Leave a comment, not only for the YouTube algo, but also, again, I want your guys' feedback if you guys are digging these series and what players you want to see next in future episodes. But that'll do it for me, man. We're back. Eight days off. Hand, foot, and mouth disease kicked my ass. If you're a parent and there's an outbreak, there's, it, it's kids under five years old that get this shit. Fucking book a hotel and, and see ya. Don't see those little brats for a week. You do not want... It's like the worst thing. I would rather, you know, the old COVID. I, I had that. I'd rather that. That only knocked me on my ass for four days. Eight days. Hand, foot, and mouth. You know what it was? Here's, what, here's exactly what it was. I need a rant. Who makes this fucking disease? How is there no medicine for this? It's no. It's a run its course type thing. All right, so you get, I would say, comparable to a strep throat in terms of like sore throat. I'm, I had no less than 12 canker sores in my mouth. On my face. Broke out like I was working behind the grill at a McDonald's. 16-year-old greasy fucking, like... 100 zits on my face itchy beyond and then on your hands you get blisters on the on your hands like it i couldn't text i couldn't hold a fucking controller couldn't type couldn't work completely wrote me off and then it's just like oh yeah your feet too hey you, you want to move around you like moving around psych blisters on your feet it's like the fucking worst thing of all time first world problems right it's the worst Thing that can get tracked in that's common it's calm that's what makes it the worst thing of all time in relation to being a parent in relation to daycares is that it's it's so prevalent every year and there's nothing you can fucking do about it. you just gotta let it run either way i digress i'm back i'm feeling good i'm recovering thanks everyone for reaching out and we're back baby we're gonna keep on keeping on here happy canada day this is going out on canada day and i'll see you guys back here on the next one appreciate you love you guys so much for supporting the channel and i'll see you on the next one Peace out. Love ya.